Me myself is that I became Muslim like 13 years ago uh, in Egypt, and after that, you know, I uh, studied the master program and PhD program at Kyoto University, and my main area is Ottoman Tasawwuf, and but. Now in Japan, like we have like more and more Muslim. I think Muslim community is really growing. Uh, now we have seen there is no clear statistics, uh, but it is says that oh my God, it said welcome Dr. Yamamoto. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it says like two hundred thousand Muslim are now living in Japan. Like two hundred thousand Muslim. I think it's, it's, it's huge. Uh, but the, most of them are foreigners. Uh, but now we but even now we have the like second generation and even third generations. But when it comes to the history of Islam in Japan, that we have uh, actually uh, we can say that we actually don't have like a really long Islamic history uh, because the inter uh, Japanese interaction with Muslims or is or Islamic countries or Islamic civilization start during the modernization. So in the maximum, it's just 100 years old. So as the Muslim community, like we are in still like an infant stage, but. Uh, I still remember that like, when I became Muslim, I was so happy like Egypt. Like I thought, you know, uh, that the yeah, uh, uh, now I mean, I read like a big like one ummah. Uh, but when I go back to Japan, and I think remember it was like summer festivals. The uh, I uh, wear this like traditional like a Japanese clothes uh, like a kimono, and I also had like Muslim friends like in Kyoto, and they were really nice. They didn't have any bad intention. But one of my friends has said to me. That why you're wearing like non-Muslim clothes, or like why you're wearing like a kafir clothes, that you should wear like a Muslim like clothes, and and I was so shocked because I never thought that the Japanese culture is either like non-Muslims or like un-Islamics or like kafir like a, like a cultures. Uh, that I thought yeah, this is culture is cultures, but at the time I don't have a really strong uh, identity as like a Muslim, so I thought you know I need to learn uh, something like actually correct knowledges, or I thought you know I have to embrace like a correct like appropriate. Uh, like Islam uh, values, so uh, I bought like uh, you know, w when I'm coming back from Egypt, I bought garabeya. Do you know garabeya is Egyptian like food? So I wear the uh, garabeya and try to walk in Kyoto, and it's really strange. But the way Egyptian wear garabeya, they look so beautiful. <laughs> but uh, when I wear garabeya, I look like just a Japanese tourist <laughs> in, the, in, in the Disneyland without the understanding like, the beauty of garabeya. And then I just, I just asked Google like, what would be like Islamic clothes called for Japanese. Right? And, Google, and Google advised me that the batik, do you know batik? It's a Malay and Indonesian, like a traditional clothes. Uh, so I already from, I, I don't remember, it's, it's not like an internet shop, I think. As so I wear like a Malay and Indonesian batik. And again, when Malay and Indonesian wear, people wear batik, it, it looks so beautiful. But then when I batik, I look just a Japanese tourist in Hawaii. Like, <laughs> so, this is like during this like trial and error. Like I, I gradually like uh, started to realize that we yeah, we need to find like our own method to express the Islamic values and experiences the Islam, uh, Islamic values and like taste and, and a way to like taste uh, the hakika and the realities of the Islam. So today, you know, this presentation is like this is not the, my answers, but this is the, the I want to share like my current. Uh, like experiences or even like experiment, you know, occurring my progress. That how am I trying to like digest things, the Islamic knowledge that I've studied today. Okay, with me. And and since you know, uh, in general, I'm working as a lecturer in the Maramani University in Turkey, and I'm teaching like Islamic studies or history to some of the undergraduate students. And while I'm like, teaching Islamic studies to the Turkish audiences, I'm also uh, translating uh, the Islamic classic into the like, Japanese languages. So my first uh, translation was the Abdul Rahman Salami's Futuwa. So Futuwa was in English is translated as the uh, like Islamic chivalry. Uh, so Fata means like youngness. So Futuwa means like it's the, uh, Futuwa is like a philosophy or the creed or the akhlaq uh, which like a young like a Muslim should like learn and embody it. And, uh, <coughs> and in this Japanese we call Islam no kishido seishin. Kishido means like chivalry, the spirit of chivalry. But in the subtitle, I also use like this is like Isla this is the bushido of the Islamic akhlaq. Do you know bushido? It's like a philosophy of the samurai, the Japanese samurai. Because I found out that, you know there are lots of similarity between the Japanese like akhlaq, Japanese like morality, and Islamic morality. And usually, the many like Muslim like scholars they try to introduce Islam for uh, for more like a metaphysical aspect, like what is the concept of divinities, uh, what is the creation of divine, 
or what is the meaning of the prophet. And of course, like, you know, this is really important for, uh, for us to learn. But uh, also, uh, sometimes just one small beautiful act of akhlaq might have a huge impact uh, to like, non-Muslim like, audiences to understand Islamic values. For example, this futuwa, you know, content itself is so simple. It said, like, you know, sometimes in the, in the, when you see the person who are hungry, you should give food. Or uh, when, you, uh, when, you, uh, when you see a person in like, despair, you should be stay with them. The same thing, everybody can say it. But I saw this manifestation of futuwa, you know, when I traveled to Egypt, you know, when I was a non-Muslim. Uh, uh, at the time, I, I explained the first, time, the first Ramadan there. And in Egypt, there is a culture called Ma'idat al-Rahman. Uh, Ma'id al-Rahman is the, uh, like, it means like table of like, uh, the merciful. Uh, it is the, in Egypt, during Ramadan, like every family prepared like extra food and they, and, and they put it on the, uh, the, either the street and everybody can eat. And at the time, you know, I, was the, I was studying in, uh, classical Arabic in language schools. And after I finished the classes, I'm going back, uh, I was going back to the apartment. And in the apartment, there was the Bawab. Bawab is like a doorkeeper of the garden. And he was having his iftar, and he was just he had just like one bread and one cucumber, and he was eating cucumber. And the doorkeeper like saw me, and I saw him, but immediately he when he saw me, the immediately he gave his cucumber without any hesitation. He said like tafatdar, <laughs> and but it was a cucumber, <laughs> and, and <laughs> but but I never taste such uh, like tasty a cucumber <laughs> in my heart. And I'm really surprised that you know this Bawa, you know, Bawa is a really decent job. He's not like a really, like, richest person in Egypt. Uh, he was a really, really humble life. And maybe this one bread, one loaf of bread, and this one cucumber, maybe like it's just, just the only thing that he had uh, in his day. But when he saw me, this non Muslim, you know, at the time I'm still confident in him, but he never hesitated to give this one cucumber like, to me with a whole smile. So that's why like, like, every religion can talk about beautiful things. Uh, but applying this akhlaq into the praxis is another level. It's really difficult. But like, in Japanese bushido as well, like in, if you read, by the, if, if there's millions of books about like Japanese like, philosophy. I don't know, like minimalism or like ikigai philosophy, or I don't know, like komari method of you know, uh, organizing the houses. But like, everybody talk about beautiful things. But in the Muslim, the, in the, they are, like I know the most the most Muslim country they are facing the challenges. But still, they even just the, in the street. One of the four street, there are like a person who tried to put this beautiful akhlaq into the practice. And many people ask me you know, why I become Muslim, and I actually I don't have like any dramatic episode about you know, how I become Muslim. But when I remember uh, the whole memory, uh, the, uh, the, you know, the days that I experienced the past in Egypt, I think that moment is really having a great impact on me uh, to decide as a Muslim. And the right, and, no, is it, or right side, it's that I also trans, I was a member of translating Ikhya Muruddin and Muqtasar Ikhya Muruddin translated. And not only translating Japanese translation, no, tra Islamic classics to the ja Islamic classics to Japanese languages, I am also translating the Japanese classic uh, to Turkish. Uh, because in, because in Turkey, like, there are so many like, uh, like sh uh, undergrad students who are interested in Japanese cultures. Uh, but the, in Turkey, uh, they don't have like, enough resources. The, most of the Turkish students, they only access to like, English resources. And even when I'm given the courses, the like, Turkish students always ask me, well, so when I talk about uh, like, Japanese religions or Japanese cultures, like, Turkish students always ask me, is there English translation of this? And I think this is so sad because they are Turkish. The like, first thing they should ask is, that, is there any Turkish translation? So in this way, like when I, now I'm working in the Muslim countries, but I think the most challenging thing is about in Muslim countries is that there is so strong uh, like Western like a centrism, which is embedded in the Turkish society. Uh, so in this, but I think as a Muslim uh, like intellectual, uh, not only like introducing like Islamic values into like own uh, I don't know the home ground like in Japan, or not only just like writing articles in English or books in English. But I think uh, we, especially the Muslim intellectual, we should stay in local. For example, like if I'm based in Istanbul, then I should serve you know, the students in Istanbul, and we should understand what, they, uh, uh, what kind of need they need. Uh, next slide. Yeah, sure. And this is, the, as I said, this is like the like last two, three years like, I'm working on this like, project. So uh, about 
imagining the Japanese like Islamic cultures. Uh, there is like, a really short essay in the uh, website called Service in Tradition. It's titled, Is it possible to create a Japanese Islamic cultures? Uh, can you listen to the next slide? But uh, in this essay, I also use the word Islamic. Uh, I'm carefully using the word, uh, they are uh, using the word like Islamic instead of using the Islamic. I only use the Islamic when it comes to related to like a religious aspect, as like a dogma. And when it gets Islamic, uh, I follow the definition of the Marshall Hudson. So Marshall Hudson said this Islamic means like a cultural manifestation of the Islam, uh, Islamic values, uh, which can be practiced as Asian joy by both like Muslim and also like non-Muslims. So now I'm designing lots of like Islamic like, handicrafts or like or art, but this is not only for like Muslim audiences in Japan. But I also want to create like one like shared cultures, uh, which can be like, uh, like uh, in, uh, cherished and practiced, like non-Muslim Japanese, and also Muslim Japanese, or maybe just like uh, the people in all around the world. Can you the next slide? Oh. And by the way, I also ch asked ChatGPT yeah. uh, because this is a new project. Nobody does this, so I just I just ask you know this smart ChatGPT, how can I create Japanese Islamic cultures, and. This chat GPT is so kind, uh, kind enough to give me like 10 <laughs> lists of the advice of how can create a, create a Japanese Islamic cultures. But actually, this is amazing how detailed he knows <laughs> it answers. But can you go to the next slide? Do you know like mid-journey? It's like a generation like AI. Like if you ask this program, if you write a prompt, this uh, AI would draw like a visual image of it. And I asked also the same question, like, can you imagine like Japanese Islamic art and cultures? And this is what the AI draw it. And for me, I don't know, like you also the Japanese, but I don't think this is Japanese art. Like, actually, I don't know what, what kind of art it is. So I think this is what, you know, what the, the shortcoming of the deep, this deep learning AI. Like this, uh, they are really good at like discursive accept. Like they are really good at articulating accept, but actually just, just playing, playing on the words. So it means like, they can, talk about, they can talk about the apple, but they haven't tasted the taste of the apple. So, and, and right now, this, I'm sure this, chat, you know, this deep learning AI will develop within the five years and 10 years. And I think in this, in, in, in very soon, you know, they, they exceed our intellectual level, but only on, I think, as like a written text. I think when it comes to the art, like this creative, like tangible art, I think there is something earlier that humanity and like, I can show. So this is why, I mean, not just like writing the articles, essays, the books, you know, I, uh, uh, I started like, working on the traditional artists in Japan, and I talked with them, and I explained like, um, like, it's the, like I explained like Islamic, uh, like classics, and also the history of Islamic art, and now I'm trying to design the so-called like, Islamic uh, handicraft all together. Okay, go in the next slide there. Oh, by the way, I also asked another question. Like, imagine like Japanese like Muslims, and this is how you know this meat journey like designed it. And he may be like a Japanese, but this clothes is not like Japanese like a clothes. And when it comes to like this female character, like I, I don't know what kind uh, how how, uh, how come like he, he this, I don't know he or she, but but this deep learning AI design like this because this architecture is not Japanese at all. This clothes is I don't know. Maybe like half Chinese or half Japanese, but still it's not Japanese. And this hijab, is, this hijab is like exists everywhere. And, but what my most pro problematic point is that this meat journey understand the word Japanese is the kind of like ethnicity. Because this is how it creates see in this face, uh, this male like characters. Uh, but right now, uh, but uh, the reason why I see this like problem, because in Japan, now we have, as I said, now we have like 200,000 Muslims living in Japan. And we have a second generation, but, they are, but they are, we have like a Pakistani Japanese, like a Malay Japanese, or Palestinian Japanese, or uh, like Indonesian Japanese, or Egyptian Japanese. And they are all Japanese. And this is, means like, in, I think now we are entering the stage that we have to define, and, and many people think that you know, Japan is like homogenic like society, that we're only like this Japanese, Japanese are living there. But actually this, this Japanese is also not Japanese. Like, they're actually real native Japanese are now living in Hokkaido. And they are, they are Ainu in you know, ethnics. You know, they are like a native Japanese. And we are Konkore who came like thousands of years ago. So what I want to say is that if we want to, if I want to create like a Japanese Islamic culture, it should not be like a superficial, like far right wing kind of, uh, like a pure, like a Japanese culture. 
We should we should try to like uh, like exclusive. Uh, like I, I I hope it doesn't make uh, it uh, it makes sense. But now, like if I want to create like especially like Japanese Islamic culture, uh, this culture must be like a reflection of the realities or like a diversity that now the like, Japanese Muslim are enjoying. So that's why like uh, when I when I'm designing this Japanese Islamic handcraft. Like, I'm not presenting this as like a pure like a Japanese culture, which can be like uh, which can uh, purify the uh, like a contaminations of the uh, I don't know the uh, like unpleasant like element, which is sometimes a far right wing group in Japan like, like claiming, because uh, because actually this is how the Japanese culture developed. Because now I'm wearing kimono, right? This kimono, everybody knows to wear kimono. And do you know what the name of this inner kimono? It's called juban, juban. Uh, example, this is say naga juban. But this Japan is not Japanese. This is a translated word. It's, it's, it's the word came from outside. Like, can you say? Can you guess what is the original word? Japan. Arabic. Arabic. Eh, Arabic. Arabic. Yes. Jubba. Jubba. This is Jubba. Yes. So this came from Portuguese. So actually, the origin was you know the, the, this is based on the Jubba, which are wear in the in the Muslim is and the Andalus, and from the oceans, you know, the, uh, this Jubba came to Japan. And the Japanese, like a tea artist or the Japanese samurai, they love you know the beauty of this jubba so much. So that's why they started to wear it as like inner clothes. So actually, this is not kafir clothes. Like, this is Muslim clothes. <laughs> so this is the Islamic clothes. This is the Islamic clothes which is enjoyed by both Muslims and non-Muslim. So now I'm wearing like half Japanese, half Arab clothes. So this is what the culture should be. Does it? So uh, I keep. So when I interview, like some people ask me that, that what is the purpose of you know, creating Japanese cultures? Because I'm trying to, uh, I'm engaging this project to prove that there is no such thing as like pure cultures. That when you can, uh, for example, like now you're living, living in the UK, but I think the British culture is a good example. Like what is a pure British cultures? Like is there anything that's like pure British cultures? Like, like drinking tea? Huh? Huh? We like to make the joke that it doesn't exist. Oh yeah. For example, like when you say like the Britain, like which Britain, like Roman Britain, or like or Brit or or the England, or the United Kingdom, or even drinking tea, like drinking tea is not British cultures, like you know, they just you know, throw it from India and China, like you know. see, uh, and <clears throat> so that's why it, actually the culture is a reflection that the, how the human society is like a complex, and this is also how the Japanese culture should, should be, do that, and. These are really important like, articles, uh, which I really learned a lot. It's the, uh, written by the Omar Farouk Abdullah. It's the Islam and the Cultural Imperative. And he said that you know, this in Islam is like a crystal clear liver. And the water is like pure. Like this, in the water of Islam is pure and sweet and life-given, but having no color of their own, and reflect the bedrock out of which they flow. Mm -hmm. uh, and in China, Islam looks Chinese, and in Mali, it looks African. And, and it sustained the cultural relevance, listing people, in diverse places, and different time under late Islam, long success as a global like civilization. So I think this is really like a uh, like strong like statement. Like Islam itself doesn't have any, any color. Like it just like gives uh, like a life giving force uh, to the, the every like a local like a, uh, like a land, and just like actually the Islam it gives us as a clear perspective how we can like respect. Uh, like, a, like, uh, like a diversity of the humanity. Uh, and <clears throat> and sometimes, you know, Islam gives us like a new creativity of how can we redefine the local cultures. I uh, can do next. So. And since, you know, I am based in Istanbul, uh, I think, you know, this Ottoman culture is one of the good examples. For example, they, many people think the Ottoman culture is like a Turkic culture, but it's not. Like the Ottoman culture is composed of like Arab and Persian and the Turkic and also like Chinese like cultures. Next slide. Do you know this like chini like uh, like art? Uh, it's called like chini or art. It's it's uh, it's used in like a Turkish like a tile uh, art uh, the art. But uh, they they is a really typical like a Turkish like a pattern which consists of like, three circle. And actually this come from uh, this chintamani like art. Uh, which and actually this is like a Buddhist art, like Buddhist pattern. 
But this the Turkic artists, uh, they embraced in this uh, the part and they uh, they use it for the you know, like a Muslim art. But it doesn't mean that this Turkish Islamic art has like a kafir element or like a contaminated element. Like this is how the culture should be. The, this uh, cultural interaction is like always like a compress, and this is how the, uh, uh, and this is how the Islamic civilization like developed. Then, uh, where then you know, I am really like. Then you know, I am convinced that you know we can also use like a Japanese like element to explain the Islamic Islamic spirituality. You do this. So, so right now you know I'm using this Japanese tea ceremony uh, as like a cultural experiment to imagine Japanese Islamic cultures. Uh, can you go to the next thing? Yes. I can go to the next slide. Yes. Oh, because. Uh, because I believe uh, this, there are so many like similarity between this Japanese tea ceremony training and especially like a tasawo like a cultures. For example, this left side in the picture, and you know, this is uh, this is the uh, 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 training, the traditional tea room, and you know the person in the center, uh, she is my master. She is my master of the tea ceremony, and these are like should, uh, her students. And can you see, you know, the students are bowing to like a who are Swiss and also bowing to the masters. So this is how, uh, like a traditional, I mean, Japanese are like learning in how to show respect or learning how to like care the others. And while uh, this is the uh, one, uh, this is not a real person. This is all the statues. <laughs> this is one of the scene, uh, uh, the statues uh, in the Amebelebi uh, Museum in Konya, and. Many people like uh, uh, knows that this Mevlevi Tarika as like a wearing dervishes, you know, the dancing like dervishes. But I see this is just one part of the Mevlevi training. Actually, the main culture of this Mevlevi Tarika is the like Mevlevi kitchen. Actually, it happens to be that this name of this place is Mevlevi kitchen. But uh, this Mevlevi Tarika, once the students enter this Tarika, the sheikh, you know, the master, the master appoints the students to their job in the in the kitchen. And this is like a first step of the, you know, the murid uh, to learn the spiritual training. So the, this murid is uh, like a study the how to like a cook the rices or they prepare the soup or or cleaning like a floor. And so, and in in Turkish uh, there is a famous word uh, by the Gurumi, the hamduk tishtek yanduk. Hamduk means I was raw. It means I was uh, I, I didn't know anything. And tishtek means I am cooked. It means I am cooked by the master. It means like I got this spiritual education. And Yanduk is like, I, I, now I'm burned by the love of the divine. And this is exactly the same like, philosophy that in this, of the tea ceremony, uh, tea ceremony itself. So when they are like, preparing the tea, actually preparing the tea itself is not a problem. It's not, but this is just the one simple matcha. The most important thing is that while preparing this tea ceremony, while carefully like, taking care of the tea use and tools, uh, this is a metaphor to take care of the whole world. So this is how, how the Japanese learn the spirit of the altruism. That's why uh, I imagine that if this Sufi tariqa, maybe like Nakshbandis or Mevlevis or Harvati, the any other tariqa would be, if they arrive in Japan in medieval period, then I'm sure this Sufi tariqa would use this Japanese tea ceremony uh, for like a tasawo, like spiritual training. For another good example is, for example, this is the Uzbek Kuder is It's the uh, Sufi lodges for like Uzbek immigrants. Uh, it's located in Istanbul, and when you and uh, now it's not it's, it's used as the uh, like educational institute for Islamic studies. But before the modernization, these Sufi lodges were used for the uh, especially for like Uzbek like Sufis, uh, who came from Uzbekistan uh, in uh, to uh, and, uh, and usually you know, they were while they in the way to go to the Hajj. They, uh, they stop in this Uzbek Tekesi and they were uh, doing the spiritual training. And when you enter the Sufi lodges, the first calligraphy you saw uh, this uh, this Persian or Turkish or Ottoman languages is hitch. Hitch means like a nothingness. So the why the Sufis they take this uh, tra spiritual tradition uh, tra uh, training uh, to understand that you are nothing. And this is completely opposite to modern education. For example, in the modern education that we learn that how we can be like someone or what or that we always care that what can we learn from us. So we always focus on something, or it become like a someone. But the main aim of the Sufi, uh, the Sufi education is to learn the nothingness of yourself and nothing of doing yet, so that you can realize the absolute oneness of the divine existence, which is Allah. 
And in the Japanese tea, tea ceremony, uh, which is called Ichigo Ichie, I think Japanese will know, Ichigo Ichie means like one, this moment will be like the last moment. Means that this is also in Japanese tea ceremony, uh, before the training, the students are required to uh, like observe the calligraphy, which is prepared by my master. And this is one of the most famous calligraphy that it, it's used in tea ceremony. It's the one, this moment will be the last moment. And it means that, that uh, we don't, we, uh, this, this may be like the last moment that we can, uh, we can gather, or, or this may be the last moment that we can do tea ceremony. That's why you know, we, have to, we have to cherish this, the moment, which was like, created and also given by the divine being. And if you look, uh, if you like study like a Sufi, like a classical text, there is a certain terminus called Ibn al Waqt. And the Ibn al Waqt, it means like a son of this moment. It means like that those who reach to the Hakika, those who understand the reality of the Islam, knows that in the every moment is special, is pre uh, precious, and every moment is equally like, pre pre uh, precious. So this is how uh, like I, I, I started to find there are like so many like a common like spirituality like between Japanese uh, culture. And Islam get cautious. I can't go to the next stage. And by the way, you might. Oh, by the way, are you read, uh, are you reading manga? Do you know manga or anime? Why yeah. manga? Oh, okay, thank you very much. <laughs> because right now Korean TV series are more popular, so I'm very worried. So. This is one famous like manga. Uh, this is one of my favorite manga. It's called Hyoge Mono. It's a manga about this history of tea ceremony. And in, the, in this tea, tea ceremony, uh, tea artists are preferred to use like a black color bowls. But this blackness has a meaning. And th in this manga, this, uh, you know, this Sen no Riki, the founder of Tea Ceremony, he explained that why he's using this black color. And he said that, to my, I couldn't find excess in every aspect of life, but if you remove all of the excess, the black is the only color to remain. The black is the color of my ideal, and it represents my ideal life. So he said that this black is actually the symbol that, that you overcome the every like, khawatir, I mean distraction, uh, that you may encounter in dunya, and 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 the polish the heart. So this is like a metaphor of the polished uh, like heart, the pure heart, which don't have any destruction uh, in life. So, and another famous art which is used in this tea ceremony is this kin kintsugi, means like gold repairing. Uh, this gold repairing is based on the Japanese philosophy that actually this is not just try, uh, try to make like a fancy like a, uh, like a table. Like usually this table is made of ceramic, so it's really going to get broken. But uh, this table is actually the metaphor of a human being. It means that when you live in this life, like, uh, it is inevitable that you make mistakes. It is inevitable you, that, you, uh, that you will get like a despair or you will face a lot of challenges. And sometimes you get like broken uh, and or cracked. Uh, but what is important is that you will repair yourself with the gold. It means that this gold is like making repentance and try to become the human. So this kintsugi like bow is actually a metaphor of the, like, uh, of the fragileness of human being and also the beauty of the making or repentance. And anybody who reads like an Islamic classic about Tasaw, that you, uh, that you, uh, that you would know that what is the first, the first chapter of the you know, Sufi like a classics? It's a tawbah, you know, repentance. So this is how really, you, may like, uh, you may think that this Islamic uh, Japanese culture is alien to Muslim, but actually not. And what we need is the, this process of semantic reconstructions. Like the, we, can, the, we can use this Japanese like, method to explain you know, like the beauty of Islam. The next. So, on, by the way, this is the, uh, the natsume is like a tea container, which in the in Japanese tea ceremony, and usually this is nuts, uh, And by the way, natsume means like a tamur in dates, dates, and why? And actually, dates would never grow in Japan. So this is also the good example that Japanese artists have very really open-minded. You know, it's in the 15th century, 16th century. So they, uh, when they import like dates from the other country, usually from Philippines or maybe Arab countries. You know, they love the, you know, the shape of the, of the dates, so that's why they named the tea container as like a date, Natsume. Mm -hmm. So that's why I keep saying the dates not start seeing the pure like Japanese cultures. And this Natsume is that usually it's designed by, oh, can you go to the next? Oh, so now I'm, so this Natsume uh, is preferred to use, uh, so uh, you can see a lot of like traditional like, Japanese like patterns or sometimes uh, or even we, uh, they have like a Christmas like a tree like a natsume, 
uh, when uh, they, they when they uh, so they use this nut smell in in, in the Christmas. But uh, I have started that maybe I can uh, I can design like correct Islamic nut smell. So I found one. Oh, can you go to the next slide? I so I uh, so this is the, my friend. He's very traditional. This lacquerware like an uh, artist uh, who are designing uh, like a uh, like a new lacquerware like a handicraft in Kyoto. So now I work with him, and the, I, I discuss with him the, what would be like an Islamic kit, like a nasme, uh, uh, so that you know, to to introduce the Islamic spiritualities. And next slide. And this uh, jami is in the uh, is Ulu jami is located in Bursa. It's the ex capital of the Ottoman Empire. So Istanbul is the last uh, capital, and the Bursa is the ex capital. And this Ulu jami is really famous for Islamic calligraphy. Now, I don't know how many people have been there, but it's so beautiful. It's the it's the, the that you, uh, when you enter this jami, you can feel that this jami, this Islamic calligraphy, is like a manifestation of the Allah, like it was. So, and this is the, my most favorite, like Islamic calligraphy, Uru Jami. Uh, so this four wall is represented. So it's that linda, but so this is what more meaning, what more fikun da ya nafu. So this is Allah and Rasul and Mu'minun, what what are key munafikun. So this the. So it means that this explains like four levels of being, like Munafik and Mu'minu and Rasul and the Prophet and Allah. And another, another interpretation is this two wa represent the Asma Husna, the beautiful names of Allah. So this is like, a, so this is actually represent you know the zikr in Allah, Allah. So that's why I have designed next slide, like uh, this Urujami Natsume. So I think I'm pretty sure. That this is the first uh, Islamic tea container in the history of Islam. <laughs> <laughs> so I think this is the history. I, 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 maybe if I die, in, I don't know. Allah, or so, may Allah protect me. But uh, please, somebody uh, donate this uh, tea container to the British Museum somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I will explain the detail. But uh, during this tea ceremony, uh, there is a moment that the tea, ar uh, the tea artist uh, purifies this tea container with a special handkerchief. But when they are at uh, Polishing this tea, a tea container of handkerchief. Actually, this is the metaphor of the uh, purif uh, rectifying your heart, uh, rect uh, pur uh, polishing the heart. So that's why you know I put this uh, like uh, like this uh, Islamic calligraphy uh, on the tea container because when you when you uh, when you are cleaning this tea container, maybe you can make a zikr like Allah, 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 Allah. And another another design, that I, another tea container I have designed is called Hitch Natsume container. Uh, because this hitch is, I just show, it's, uh, I found this in calligraphy in the Uzbek Redetek. It's a Sufi lodges for the Uzbek immigrants. So this hitch means like a nothingness. So when you are polishing this tea container, maybe you can, make, you can also another make, uh, making like zikr to remember the nothingness like, of yourself. So this is how I'm trying to design what would be like a Japanese way of like, uh, making zikr, a Sufi way. So this is actually like a portable uh, like Zawiya, Sufi lodges. <laughs> uh, another thing. And I'm not just uh, like designing that this uh, Islamic handicraft. I'm also doing um, uh, uh, making uh, like a workshop in Japan as well. So because this is the last workshop I did in the Tokyo Jami. The Tokyo Jami is like a masjid which is built by the Turkish like government. Government. And uh, and when I uh, organize this workshop, uh, this you know, these like uh, the pr uh, participant is like a non-Muslim like a Japanese and also like second generation like Muslims. So this is how I'm trying to like. Uh, so uh, I also talk about com uh, the same topic to, especially to the second generation Muslims. That that you know, imagining Japanese culture is not like an imagining like exclusive, uh, like a superficial like a Japanese culture. Like Islamic culture should be like a reflection uh, of the like diversity of Japanese Muslims that we are enjoying. So they are like Pakistani Japanese and also Indonesian Japanese and also like Bengali Japanese too. So I encourage them to use, for example, uh, I I also encourage them to design. Like an Islamic handicraft, but for example, if if someone uh, is like a Pakistani Japanese, maybe uh, I believe that he should use like Urdu to design Islamic handicraft, or maybe Indonesian, maybe they can uh, they can design like a Japanese style like a body clothes. So this is how I believe that is the like Japanese culture like go to like a next level and not uh, uh, to overcome uh, the uh, how can I say like a fixed ideas. And another project is like a pop cultures, so. Now I'm doing uh, design. Now I'm trying to use this like Japanese manga as, as like a medium to introduce the Japanese uh, to introduce the Islamic spiritualities. Uh, next slide. Uh, 
So this is like one of the short articles. It's about the Japanese. The title is Japanese manga: The Cutting Edge of Traditional Creativities. So many people think that this Japanese manga is like a Japanese version of SpongeBob, like just superficial, like an you know, art for only for the children. But it's not. Uh, I don't know how many people watch like I don't know. Like do you know Naruto's or like One Piece or Jujutsu Kaisen or I don't know the like Attack on Titan or Demon Slayer. For example, Attack on Titan. This is so profound manga. Like, this is not only for the children. Like, even I'm still, I'm already 33 years old, but still so obsessed with the Japanese manga because it has a really uh, like rich like messages. Can you go? The one of the good, the important message in Japanese manga is like mastership and discipleship. Now, do you know the word sensei? Sensei. It means like uh, the teacher, but this is not like teacher in high school, junior high school. The teacher it means like master. You know the chef and the murshid. So my most favorite manga is this Naruto. Like I grew up in Naruto. Do you know Naruto? Have you ever read Naruto? Like I, I, I really cried when Naruto get married with Hinata. <laughs> and I'm so angry why this Naruto is keep loving this Sakura because he's so, I don't know, I don't say bad things. But, <laughs> but, but the, what is the message with Naruto is that this, uh, this whole series about like, his mastership and discipleship and also the beauty of the making Toba. Like, do you remember the first episode of Naruto? The, and it's the title is the when the Naruto become like a proper ninja. That he he has he's a teacher like Iruka Sensei, and Naruto at the time he was really like a notorious like a kid. Like he was not like serious about like you know uh, like ninja to like ninja educations. But uh, but Iruka Sensei he's the only one who uh, take, uh, who uh, tried to like uh, like a guide this Naruto. But in that episode, it turns out that parents of Iruka Sensei got killed by the monster which dwells in inside of Naruto. So actually this Iruka sensei has, like, has a grudge against like Naruto. And when, but yet, you know, the, the Naruto was about to, about to get killed, this Iruka sensei, he tried to sacrifice himself to save, him, save, him, save Naruto's life. And at that moment, you know, Iruka sensei, that he confessed that, uh, that, uh, that he had a grudge against him while like, well, he was crying. But, I, but in that episode, that is the moment that Iruka Sensei uh, become like a true like a teacher for the Naruto, and that is the moment that you know, this Naruto become like a proper uh, uh, the proper like students of Iruka Sensei. So this the very first episode of Naruto start with like a tauba, repentance. So this is like a Japanese Sufi literature. I mean, he's a Muslim, but the message is so tasawwuf. And this uh, Jiraiya sensei also too. Jiraiya, this, this Jiraiya sensei, you know, this old guy, he's, 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 he's uh, also the teacher of the Naruto. That he's not the perfect human being. Like, he's like a playboy and he's not really a ninja. Like, he, like, he's depicted as like a tangible figure. But, uh, but, but one of the most thing, uh, important things is that he, try, uh, uh, he tried to, he always like, sacrificed himself to uh, transmit his knowledge or spirituality to like, the next generation. And Naruto knows his like, spirit, so that's why you know, he, he inherited spirituality. So an another thing is that not only just like, one like, master and one disciple, the whole story of the Japanese manga is like a genealogy, it's a spiritual genealogy uh, of uh, a certain ideas. And you had exactly a word in Arabic, like siddha siddha, you know, genealogy. So this Naruto is about like a shape and a murid and also tauba and like siddha siddha. And the Full Metal Alchemist, also the same in the Vinland Saga, they all in Japanese show in the manga, they have this like a common like a structure. Like that if you want to develop yourself, that you have to like serve the others, and also you need a guidance from the masters. And it may sound really like a cliche, but if you watch like Western like a TV series, I think the difference becomes really obvious. Because I was watching the Star Wars series. I'm a big fan of Star Wars, but I also watched the. Uh, I was watched the latest series, like se episode seven to episode nine. But I'm really surprised because in the older series, right, like episode one to episode six, like uh, like Obi Wan Kenobi's or Anakin Skywalker or like Luke Skywalker, they all they, they all had a master to get a spiritual training. But new series in Ray, you know, female protagonist, like he, no, not he, she suddenly became like strongest Jedi in the whole series of Star Wars without any guidance on the master. Like in the episode eight, I expected that Luke Skywalker would guide her to become like stronger Jedi, but somehow he just confined himself in like a, in a cave, and he and he never get a proper teaching. But yet Rey become like a hero and a savior in the whole universe, and how is that possible, without any guidance? 
And there was like the, the, the uh, Marvel, uh, you know, uh, I also a big fan of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And there's a movie called like Doctor Strange. Uh, well, I like the character so and he's so handsome. But, uh, but he, he also get a training in like Asian, uh, I don't know, like hidden Asian like a temple. Uh, but he also didn't have like full training for the master. And this master suddenly passed away. But in the next series, in Avengers, this Doctor Strange suddenly like, came uh, appear as like strongest magician in the whole history of this Marvel cinema, Cinematic Universe. And yet, how is that possible? And I interpret, I don't know, this is just my idea, but I think the whole this Western TV series like a reflection of what I think identity politics. It means that how these protagonists became like a best person because they define themselves so. But while this Japanese shonen manga, it's impossible that protagonists become like a, uh, become like a uh, uh, stronger person or the most intelligent person in this world, because the Japanese like literature that, or Japanese shonen manga is really emphasize the importance of the training from the masters. So that's why I said that this Japanese manga is actually the only remaining like a building slogan, you know, the novel of the spiritual like a cultivation. And I think this is why I think that, if, for example, now I live in Turkey, but there are like millions of you know, teenagers who love the Japanese manga or like Muslim students. Because I think you know, they are somehow like, getting this like, Islamic like, message when they're reading or they're watching Japanese anime, even without knowing it. Go to the next stage. Oh yeah, you can go to the next stage. This, this is two otaku things, so I will just <laughs> skip it. And another good thing about Japanese manga is the Japanese manga is a really influential medium to like, introduce like, a traditional like, a Japanese cultures. For example, the last side is this the manga is based on the Japanese like, sit-down comedy. It's not stand-up comedy. It's a traditional uh, like a comedy or art play uh, uh, continued from the Edo period. And this one is the manga for traditional like, a dance. So uh, but can you look at the next page? But then, then when it comes to that, it means like, when, while seeing that this ja Japanese are really good at like, uh, the introducing their traditional cultures, not only to the Japanese audiences, but to the world. Uh, we should, I think, uh, critically thinking ourselves that how we are successful in, in introducing the traditional like, Islamic like, knowledge. For example, this is a quotation of the you know, Turkish uh, like a poem. It's, it says, uh, This is the poem of the Yunus Emre. It means that knowledge is like knowing the true knowledge. And the true knowledge is knowing yourself. And if you don't know yourself, then what is the purpose of learning? So actually, this is a Turkish like, translation of the man arafa nafsaf, kad arafa rabba. That when you know yourself, then you know Allah. But right now in Turkey, for example, this, uh, since uh, this poem was written by the late uh, Rum Seljuk period, so this Turkish poem is written in Arabic alphabet. But you now in Turkey, like, uh, how many people can read this like, a traditional like, a Turkish text? I think so few. I maybe like I seen less than twenty percent, or maybe less than ten percent, mm -hmm. and when you can, or even the whole like Muslim community, like how many people know that like, this like traditional Islamic knowledge? Is? Now it's so few, mm -hmm. and that's why. For I uh, can you go to the next stage. I did a little bit of experiment because I put I design uh, like a samurai-looking character uh, under this you know this poem, and I show it to like a Turkish students. And who can who, who can read this traditional like uh, like uh, like a Turkish like a poem, and but <coughs> the, these students even though you know they cannot like really read this poem, but they but they were able to guess you know what uh, what kind of topic that this poem is talking about, because I give like a visual image, mm -hmm. and there are some like hardies criticizing uh, like drawing like human characters or the, or the picture in general, or a sunny in the face, but. Uh, but if you uh, study the history of Islam, actually there are so many like, rich like, 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 uh, culture of the uh, like, drawing or the picture. For example, in Turkey, there is a tradition called miniature. Uh, this is also the Persian art too. And even in Indonesia and Malay, uh, do you know the legend called like, Nain Wali in Indonesia, like Wali Songo? Uh, so the one of the inner Wali is called uh, uh, Sunan Karijaga. Uh, he used the shadow puppet play. Uh, to, to introduce uh, like Islam to the like, non-Muslim, you know, Hindu like, audiences. Uh, so, and, he, and Sunan Kareja, he's Wali. He's not an ordinary person. Like, he's with Naoki Yamamoto. He's like high, like Urama. But yet, he used this picture, like image, to introduce uh, Islam. So that's why, like, I understand, I think there's like a hikmah in the history. 
So now uh, I don't have like a clear answer. Maybe people can criticize. I mean, doing like this new drawing pictures, but also in the same time, I think not everyone has that good environment enough to study like Islamic study in the Islam. For example, like I'm Muslim converts. Like before, uh, like in Japan, almost there's there's no madrasa, and there's no like a school to learn Arabic languages or. Uh, or even when I go to university, uh, I am surrounded by like a non-Muslim. Uh, but uh, uh, or even in UK, like in UK, now have a big, big, big community, but not everyone has like a good environment to seek the traditional like Islamic like knowledge. So that's why I think this the uh, opportunity to study Islamic uh, to Islam is it should not be confined in only the madrasa or a certain institute. I think. There should be like the, every kind. There should be like varieties of options to see, like to always study about Islam. So that's why uh, after I become uh, before becoming Muslim, I was studying oil painting and I really like painting. But after becoming Muslim, I stopped painting for more, more than ten years. Now I haven't studied. I am doing it practice for whole long. But uh, but uh, for the last year, you know, I started like drawing picture again because. I understand that I think somebody, is, uh, I think Muslim also should be in this field, in, in the field of art. Because if the Muslim cannot show initi initiative or creativity in the art, that someone who had more like bad intention can be dominant in this field, and they can use this field uh, for like, uh, to uh, make a bad influence in our children. The next. So, I, and I was also, you know, uh, the, uh, the, uh, I'm studying about the like, Sufi history of Anatolia, and there was famous like a uh, book of a book about history. It's called Ashk Pasadare. Ashk Pasadare is a famous historian, and he explained that how Islam spread in the land of Anatolia. Anatolia is, is called Rum. He said Rum are getting those group in some world. There will be Gazi and Rum, will be Ahi and Rum, will be Rabdara and Rum, will be the Bazi and Rum. He said that there were whole group came to the land of Anatolia. The one is Ghazi, I mean the warriors, the great warriors, the Muslim warriors. Another one is Ahiyan. Ahi is a Muslim in guild. And Abdalan, Abdalan means Sufi, you know, dervishes. And the fourth is Bajian. Baj means Persian, it means the sisters. This is the female, uh, like a Sufi like organization. So this is the warriors and the girls and uh, uh, dervish and the female, like a Sufis. And I think this is really like a cool statement that it means that this shows that you know the spreading of Islam in Anatolia is not based on or depending on a certain ethnicity or like point ideal. Like Islam spread in Anatolia through like a vision, especially the vision of Tasawwuf. Can you go to the next stage? I think this is like a Mandalorian thing. This is the Sufi version of Mandalorian because it shows. Do you know Mandalorian? If you don't mind, anyway, I'm sure it doesn't make so much. <laughs> I'll just continue. So, for example, I, there is my favorite uh, sentence in my, uh, the word in Mandalorian. He said, Mandalorian is not a race, it's a creed. And this is exactly what the history of Ottoman like, history, the Ottoman the Sufi history. They are not introducing Islam based on the one ethnicity. Like, they try to show like, a vision which can be shared not only by the Muslim, but also like a non Muslim. And I have started the project called What If This. Uh, uh, like Sufi came to like Japan, and and also form like similar like a Sufi group. So this is the, so I'm trying to design a fictional character based on like a fictional story. Next. So, so this is the first character I have designed. So do you, do you know this uh, picture? This is called like Tree of Futuba, Futuba Archu in Turkey. So this is one of the emblem, which is used by like Sufi group, especially Ahian or Sufi like a guild in Anatolia. And left side, this is a samurai helmet. So I combine these two elements, and I design like a Muslim samurai boy. <laughs> so this is how I'm trying to teach, like, uh, encourage like, Japanese like, Muslim children that, that, that is it possible to imagine like, Japanese like, Islamic cultures. Like, like, this is the handbook in the end. This, uh, uh, for example, the, this handbook has a limitation. It's, 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 uh, the design is also it costs money. It's so expensive. expensive. But this is, I'm using like, digital art. I, I'm using iPad. So everybody who has pen and paper can imagine uh, like, uh, like a Jap or like, design the Japanese Islamic art. And next one. Um, th and this is this logo is I have designed. So I love you know this you know, series of Mandalorian. So I want like in the Islamic version of Mandalorian. So I designed this logo. This is the logo of Tuva. So it's a Sufi Mandalorian logo. So and this 
is based on, for example, this samurai emblem. For example, this samurai emblem is, is our family's emblem because I'm also a descendant of samurai. And this is the emblem that I inherited through my family. So I have designed this logo that what if this Sufi group had came to Japan and formed like a samurai organization to try to spread Islam. So right now, based on this kind of the fictional story, I'm starting writing a novel and also like a manga, like a story art. Next. And another point that I'm, uh, that I'm really inspired by the Turkish history is called like Bajian, the sisters, like a, like a Muslim, like Sufi, like sis, uh, uh, sisters, and also female organization. Because if you if you watch like in a contemporary like a TV series made by Western like companies, right, like the most of the cases the Muslim female are really wrongly represented, and if you, they usually like this Muslim female are depicted as really passive. Or the or the stay in the, stay in the houses, or just following you know, what the man says, like this kind of stuff. But but if you see the history of female Sufi in Anatolia or other region, that the this Bajian is actually the, one of the most important organization uh, to uh, for the uh, the, sp uh, the spread of the Islam in Anatolia. So they are, they are like leaders of the Turkish like communities. So. So by inspiring by this in history, I have a design, next stage, this Bajia Ninja series. <laughs> <laughs> because I think this is really cool. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm very arrogant. But because when you see, for example, in Marvel Heroes, there's a character called Ms. Marvel. And the Disney, you know, they advertise this is the first, uh, like a, first like a Muslim like a character in, like a, in a Disney series. But I like the series, but it's not bad. But uh, I didn't find that kind of like Islamic like messages there. Like it's it, it really like well de depicting like life of like Muslim American uh, in New York. I think he uh, she lives in New York. But uh, but I also got some message that this kind of the Western like uh, Western like media they are trying to reduce Islam to a certain ethnicity. But as I said, that Islam is not ethnicity. And also when they and not only uh, not. It's not in the like, mob, uh, like Marvel series, but it was um, in the Turkish TV series. When they use like a hijabi characters, they always like let the character talk about what is that if they're wearing hijab is it, like correct or not. Like always, the like, hijab itself becomes the issues. But the wearing hijab is just one per, just one part of practice of Islam. That like, it's not like a main point of Islam. Don't you think so? I mean, I'm not male, so I'm not so much male. So that's why I designed this hijabi character. But the wearing hijab is so no problem. That what that what matter is that how these characters are trying to like, seek the like, Islam uh, in the land of Japan. But it just it's happening only in my head, so I need to start writing the story about it. You know. and, and also, like, visually, I'm trying to, to uh, show the Japanese audiences that this Japanese traditional like, kimono uh, is, like, is, uh, is one of the best way to express like, Islamic like, spiritualities. Because this Japanese kimono, or for example, I designed this clothes by, uh, uh, from inspired by like, uh, tr uh, like a traditional uh, Central Asian like a clothes, and also like a traditional like a Japanese like female warriors. But when I designed these characters, I think it looks so natural mm -hmm. that this you know, kimono wearing character like wearing hijab. Like, I don't see any like uh, disharmonized things like in there. It's so like a natural fit. So, <coughs> and can next. Another thing is that also. Uh, I'm, so these are some of the concept art of my this like futuwa like a manga, you know, Islamic like a manga project. Like I interpret that this Muslimness or the like, Islamness is a, is the passion for like seeking like ilm, like knowledge. So that's why this hijabi ninja, I call him like hijabi ninja. <laughs> hijabi ninja, she is trying to try to memorize the Badu al Amali, you know, the classical uh, like Islamic uh, theology like a book. So. And this uh, this guy, you know, this Muslim samurai boy, he's tried to like memorize you know, Nahu and Saraf. It means a classical uh, like uh, Arabic. And actually, this is actually my experience when I study in in, in Turkey. So I study in the traditional like Islamic educational like Wakuf in Istanbul, and Nahu and Saraf is the first sciences I have studied, and it was really hard because I'm a Japanese and this is the first time I study Arabic. But once I entered this like, educational work, the teacher asked me to memorize this Nasara Yansur, Nasara Hua Nasara, Nasara Yansur, this is rhetoric, I think. But, but yet, you know, I can remember this, you know, without this education, I'm pretty sure that you know, I couldn't maintain my like, Muslim identity. So 
now the modern education, they keep criticizing that this memorizing the classic is just like really backward. It has no creativity, but actually not. Like when you memorize the Islamic classic, actually this Islamic classic is it's like an angel. Like it dwells in your heart, and when you encounter some difficulties, this Islamic classic it will always step together. And I want these fictional characters also like work like the same. Like right now, like living Muslim is really tough. Uh, not only in the Muslim countries, because I'm living in the UK or even in Japan, like living as a Muslim is tough. And, and children are always fighting. For example, like when they, before they go into school, when they wake up, you know, they all have to, make, have to push themselves to the golden schools. You know, they have to be ready to be like a question, some of the unpleasant you know, the topics, or they have to engage with the argument. But not every children are good at argument. Maybe they are, they are not good at like, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, like discussions. So that's why they fail to, to like, explain about Islam in the schools. And uh, when you fail, that you feel that uh, you feel like completely failed. You, fail, you, you feel that you failed Muslim, or you feel alone. And then you, uh, you have to bring this despair to the schools. You know, this is really tough like, in there. I also experienced that kind of similar experiences when I was in Japan. So that's why uh, uh, now I'm trying to, like, uh, I'm sharing this like, fictional Muslim character uh, on the internet as much as possible. Uh, because uh, I want to tell them that you know, they are not alone. alone. Like, even though you know, they feel so lonely, they feel alone, and they, they think that, you know, that, they, that you know, they are surrounded by enemies, you know, I want this fictional character, I want this hijabi ninja girl to stay with you know, the, all the you know, Muslim girls who are facing the difficulties right now. You next. Okay. Yeah. And I think when I'm designing these fictional characters, I keep saying that you know, I, I think I can beat Disney. <laughs> I mean, not, not, I don't have to debate Disney, but I think the, what, what I want to say is that you know, we Muslims should engage the, the creative like, uh, uh, like art, especially like writing fictional stories. Because, uh, <clears throat> because uh, some people criticize that fiction is just like a waste of time, or the fiction is just a lie. But actually not, because as I said, you know, this, the whole art is actually a reflection of the reality. And I am designing, for example, this, uh, uh, I am designing this character you know, according to the experience that I had you know, when, I, when I study in Istanbul or, when I, or, the, or interaction with the Muslim in Egypt or Syria. For example, this one left side of this character, you know, I, de I designed this character as like a Tatar, like a Japanese uh, like a character. And because this is, uh, uh, because when I, I, I met some like a Tatar, like a Muslim in Istanbul, they said how I inspired by you know, her like a firm like belief or the strong identity. So, so the every character actually is based on the, you know, the friends or the students that I met you know, through my whole life. And especially when, I'm, especially when I'm designing female character, I always try to put like strong faces, like strong emotions. Because this is how I'm trying to like, uh, the, the, uh, fight against like prejudice or the orientalism, which is widespread in like, modern societies. Because they always try to depict like female Muslim as a really passive figure, but I, uh, I have I have lived in Turkey for five years. I have never seen passive females. <laughs> so, so, they every like especially even the undergraduate they they really love to to, uh, to argue with me. So when I say like something, they they even say that Hojam, I think you were wrong, <laughs> and they really love to argue. And this is so beautiful. Like just this uh, not only the Muslim but the Muslim. Uh, they are so hardworking. They have so they have a good spirit, and they are try. They are always striving to make this world better. And I think we need to create like fictional story. We need a Muslim Harry Potter. We need a Muslim Lord of the Rings. You know, we need a Muslim Naruto, and so that it inspires the children. Because this fictional world is not like something to escape from this dunya. Like when you when you feel that like you failed, when you lowly, when you, when you got hurt. By, in, by living in this like, dunya, like this fictional world can work as like a shelter. Like the, when you in, uh, in, in, when you go back to your room, uh, maybe you can look, uh, you can read, this, uh, you can watch this art, or maybe if I can write a novel, you can write a novel. But when you engage the fictional world, actually, uh, you, you you can uh, have time to contemplate yourself, to rebuild and reconstruct. And in next morning, like you can like re uh, 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 so that you can gain like energy. So that you can go back to the school, and I think that especially in the Muslim community, that we really don't have this kind of uh, like a, like environment, which gives uh, like energy uh, to live uh, like a Muslim. Okay, next.
And by the way, this is a little bit off the topic, but I'm also, when I'm designing a male character, I'm also designing an Islamic -like style kimono. And it looks really just ordinary kimono, right? But since they are Muslim, I put extra element. Can you guess where is it? Hmm? Yeah, inner. Yeah, trousers. <laughs> trousers. This trousers. Because usually, Jap when you wear Japanese kimonos, you don't have to wear trousers. Actually, it's really strange. But why these Muslim characters wear trousers? To hide aura. <laughs> because, because, when, uh, because when it comes to like Muslimness or like practicing religiousness or, or hiding the aura, the people always discuss about the you know, female, like, uh, like aura. Like but this is, so un uh, this is so unfair. Like male also have the aura. But in the summer, like, I, don't know how, I, I don't know why, but some males, you know, they just wear like, really tight t-shirts and show the whole body line. And this is not Muslimness. Like, this is like wrong like masculinity. Like, like, like men also have the aura to cover. So why would design this fictional character? Think I'm mean also encouraging the male students to remember that there's this tas, uh, the concept of tasattr or the hijab, uh, tahajjab, uh, is also like pract uh, the uh, practice for male Muslims as well. Go ahead, next. Yes. So uh, thinking about this is all about the presentation, but I'm 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 sharing the all my you know, Islamic handicraft art and through this Instagram account, this is Japanese Islamic art, and I also bring uh, some copy of my art. Uh, I would just uh, put it on, on the table, and personally, uh, my my idea was to write like a Japanese Islamic manga, and also I I want to continue the art, uh, but. Uh, creating art costs a lot, <laughs> and I don't have any money actually. <laughs> so, so if you support me as a sadaka, you know I will be really helpful. Uh, so, uh, and this is so. Uh, if you think uh, think you feel some empathy to my project, I'll be really happy. So I gonna sell this one my Japanese art for I don't know like thirty pounds, right? And if you can buy this picture as for the sadaka, I'm really happy. As it's a humble request, so I will just put it here. <laughs> so, so this is all my presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. So, can we start Japanese tea ceremony as well? Yeah. Okay. So, if you don't have any questions, then I can move to Japanese tea ceremony presentation. Do you have any tea, uh, teapot, and hot water? Oh, thank you. If anyone, we're getting the hot water. But if anyone has any questions, just ask Professor. Yeah, you do? Okay. Go oh, please. Um, thank you. Thank you. Jin? Japanese um, samurai culture uh -huh. and how they rely on jins and spirits. I don't know if you want to speak a little bit about Jin that. Jin and spirit? I don't remember I mentioned about jin and spirits, but uh, well, but it? basically this, you know, this, this bushido, the ahlak of samurai is based on like altruism, you know, self-sacrifice. Uh, so they believe that you know, the, uh, uh, actually this is also a message of Vinland Saga. You know, I, do you know, are you watching this anime, Vinland Saga? It's about in you know, a manga about the like, Vikings. But actually, uh, the one of the good thing is about you know Japanese artists that even though they when they are uh, making a story about the story uh, like uh, like Vikings or other like cultures outside of Japan, they put like a Japanese interpretation of it. And industries they also like uh, the character said that the real strong person is know how how not to fight or avoid fighting, and this is like a real aim of this uh, the spirit of samurai, uh, because. Not only spirit I mean, there's the uh, philosophy called ken, uh, kendo. You know kendo, you know the uh, the path of the sword, and 
And these famous like, uh, the art of the sword in Japan is called the ya, is a shinkageryu. You know shinkageryu is a yagyu mune no sword. Uh, and, and in traditional they are, uh, sword, sword art in Japan, they believe that these two type of sword, the one is satsujinken and another is katsujinken. Satsujinken is a sword to kill someone, and the, another one is the life-giving sword, the sword to give the life to the others. And this, the real, uh, real manifestation of the samurai is not, uh, is, uh, can be achieved not to kill someone or defeat someone, but to give life to the others. And so this is how I understand that you know, there is like a, uh, like a common message between like, Taso literature and also like, you know, uh, the, uh, this uh, samurai like, uh, like a philosophy. Like the why we are doing this training and not to prove ourselves or not to prove the strength, the, our strengths, but to give, uh, give the life-giving force to the others. So this is you know, the whole this altruism, the spirit of self-sacrifice is I think the main message of Japanese culture. By the way, where, where did you study Japanese? In Japan? How long have you stayed? Not very long. About a year and a half. A year and a half? Well, it's enough, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I'm really surprised that you, it's you, you were translating. It's not very good. Yeah, Jose is very good. I'm surprised. No, she's speaking so beautifully. I'm so surprised. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, this? Yeah. Oh, this? Yeah. Okay. 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 Were, were to imagine, who would be the uh, samurai equivalent of the Muslim world and the ninja equivalent? Huh? I think the samurai ninja is like this, you know, ga, uh, I think this, you know, this Bajian and Achiyan. Oh. It is like a Sufi, like a warrior, and also like a guild. Like, yeah. So this, so, <coughs> like, not only just like fighting, but also like, who, uh, who like build a village and try to serve the others. So that's why I, that's why I design this like hijabi, like a Bajian, like ninja, like series. Like, yeah. Yes. And also, thank you, thank you so much for bringing about like uh, integrating kind of like our um, local understanding of culture, like manga and seeing the Islamic messages. Because um, some of my friends and I, we worked on a project looking at like the Islamic messages and how people are doing and uh -huh. all these kind of things. So what you said really resonated with me, so I just wanted to... Ah, thank you very much. Yeah. For example, people think that this Harry Potter is just like a superficial, like a uh, like fiction story, but I don't think it's not because this whole story of Harry Potter, yeah. it just it also is trying to show that how this modern like British society is so vulnerable to like the neo-Nazi like you know, yeah. uh, like discourse, which is manifested in like Voldemort, yeah. and he's trying to show that actually this, this you know, J.K. Rowling, yeah. she believes that you know traditional like Scottish like a paganic like culture. Can be like a last resort to fight against such like postmodern you know, things. This 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 is why the last battle in you know, between like a wizard and a Voldemort happened in, like uh, in the Hogwarts, yeah. not in like center of London. Like. Yeah. So like if you know actually the, the real the proper way to interpret the fictional story, that you can learn lots of like this message from it. And what is the challenge? And what is actually sad about the contemporary Muslim society is that we don't have like in really good the fiction comes out from the Muslim communities. That we don't, and that's why he's saying that we need to create like a Muslim, like a Mandalorian, or Muslim, like a Jedi, or so Muslim, even lightsaber, right? Yeah. Yes, so thank you very much. Oh. And just from your experience, um, is there any external countries or ideologies that are coming into Japan as it's in its infancy, in its, um, is it, it's, um, in its infancy, in the Muslim population? So, are there any external forces that have any effect? Is there a positive effect? Is there a negative effect? So, I, I just as an example, in this, in this country, there's a lot of Saudi influence. Huh? There's a lot of um, influence, especially from um, like the uh, Yabandi school, uh, where a lot of the a lot of the teachers went to Saudi, taking imams in the UK, and that has had an influence here. Huh? So, what sort of influence externally is there? Oh, I see. Thank you for the question. Actually, the, there are so many forces <laughs> in Japan. And for example, even the, uh, we have the association called Association for Japanese Muslim. And they are like really like, well funded by Saudis. And also, we have a support from the Iranian uh, embassies. And also, the Turkish, uh, Turkish government also investing on the like, Muslim community. So that's why they built like Tokyo Jami. So, and I also working with the Turkish people, and they're really like, creative. And 
just uh, and also I know I have like some like uh, Wahhabi friends and also I know like some like, Iranian friends and I said I think it's really important that we work together but also in the same time that that if we you know Japanese Muslim cannot establish you know our own identities or if we cannot imagine our like Japanese like Islamic uh, tradition or art or any cultures like we can only depend on only like external forces then then we can always look about you know then we actually when uh, we don't have like intellectual independency we only remain like depending on uh, depending on always uh, we always tend to see like a strength behind uh, all these people and I think this is not healthy for the, for the Japanese Muslim in the future and as I said now now we already have like second generation and uh, with, um, and right now I met a friend uh, who is like Pakistani Japanese and now he's like studying at Harvard in Harvard you know it's the Harvard one of the best school in the world and I think this and I and to some regard, I'm quite optimistic about the future of a Japanese Muslim. But what is important for the uncles like me uh, is that we need to invest on the young generation. Uh, and this is also what missing the contemporary Muslim societies. So like even the, uh, I mean, it's really good to have a real experience like masters in the community. But as I said, like Jiraiya Sensei or Iruka Sensei or Kakashi Sensei, like a shonen manga, you know, the teacher always invests on the gen young generation, not exploiting you know this young generation. So that's why whenever I have a chance to talk in, for example, in the UK or in the Turkey or the country, like I'm not given a talk to prove myself. Like I'm not just telling that myself that I'm I'm just like coolest the Japanese Muslim in the whole history. Like I just came here to introduce. Now we have like uh, like now we uh, we have like beautiful Japanese Muslim community in Japan, and this is I want the audiences to know about it, and this is also. Uh, and also, I encourage this in Japanese Muslim uh, to like go out to Japan you know, if they if the challenges are too much, because in the end, the Muslim are not confined in the nation state. Like if it, and also the J this Japanese, I believe that Japanese ness can be uh, is not necessarily depend on like a certain ethnicity, or even I believe that this Japanese not depend on like Japanese languages. Like it just it is my definitions, but if you respect this master shame discipleship and if you respect this if you know the art of this tauba repentance and if you love this manga i think everybody can Jap become japanese <laughs> so this is how i, I how i like uh, define the, the new uh, the new generation of japanese so yes so this is what i'm thinking here so ah please yes. um i'm not sure if, uh, if it was correct but about what i read but i heard it, like the quran was already recently like the last hundred years so translated into the Japanese? I could be, do, could be wrong or oh, correct. Uh, we have many uh, version of Japanese translation of Quran. Okay. Uh, uh, but the problem is that you know, every translation is supported by in a certain, like a, a certain like top mm -hmm. schools mm -hmm. or like a nation. With a, we have like Saudi version, also Iranian version and Turkey version. And, and, uh, and I, I read all of this version and I think every version has its own beauty. But I also believe that this is not might not be good for the, the uh, non-Muslim Japanese audiences because they will get confused because which Quran is the correct Quran? Oh, so. okay. uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's why like, one of the reasons I'm creating this Japanese Islamic cultures because sometimes the people think that in order to introduce Islam uh, we have to talk about Islam but I don't think this is not necessarily the truth that you don't have to talk about Islam to prove the Islam or you don't have to like argue about Islam to prove the correctness of Islam. I said, like, maybe just one simple like beauty of the handicraft, or maybe the picture, will be like, inspiring enough for a non-Muslim to get interested in Islam. And now, you know, we the Japanese Muslim community, you still, with, is, this is like young, a new community. And if you look about the, uh, the Islamization uh, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, Islam process of Islamization, Islamic civilization, usually, it takes like 300 or 400 years uh, to uh, for like a non-Muslim region to embrace Islam, and when it become uh, when the region, the res or, or most of the region become the Muslim. Usually, it takes like 300 or 400 years. And unfortunately, that some like Islamic the missionary group, they don't understand this that this Islamization uh, is like this like a long uh, process. 
you know, they won't like they won't see the result in just like five minutes, or even just like fifteen like seconds in a TikTok. But this is not possible. Like it, it, it might take like century. It, it might take like a whole like, gener some some generation. So, uh, so one of the so. So one of, so the one reason why, uh, I'm emphasizing this cultural uh, like, uh, production, uh, which representing Islamic values, is that I want to make the Islamization of the Japanese uh, Japanese society as like slow as possible. Like I want uh, that even though you know, I want the non-Muslim Japanese to embrace the Islamic message because I'm Muslim, but but. It, it doesn't have to take like five minutes or five seconds or just one second. Right? It can be takes like maybe like at least 300 years or maybe 500 years or maybe 1,000 years or maybe just before the Yamur Kiyama in their judgment. <laughs> but it's enough. You know, that. You know, we should risk that because the only Allah can decide you know, what, what the proper time for the, for the people to end like this. So. Yes. I've seen Japan since uh, my first visit was 73. Mm -hmm. During that time, I could not find or meet any Muslim at all. Uh -huh. But over a period of time, I've seen the Muslim community grow. Uh -huh. And my last visit was last year. And I went to the mosque, and the mothers are there. Uh -huh. And there was quite a big crowd, and uh, the Japanese generation uh -huh. of Muslims was visible. Uh -huh. So the work. The, the mosques are doing there. What do you think? Is this the future for the Muslim community in Japan? That way, like the future? Mm. Like what they're teaching, would it be beneficial for the uh, mixed, you know, for Japanese children? Would they be able to uh, get the best uh, possible Islamic uh, view? Huh? From those madrasas, or do we need to do more? Uh, I'm not sure, like because I'm based in Istanbul right now, because I don't um, know exact situation in Japan. I went to Otsuka Mosque and uh -huh. also Tokyo Dam. Uh, yes, for sure. But as I said, like now, in, especially in big cities, I see Muslims everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Not only in Tokyo, okay. but in Osaka, in Fukuoka. And I said, like these Japanese Muslims, you know, they have like a really like diverse like background. Yeah. And I especially believe that this brings a new creativity to Japanese societies. And also, this is a bit off the topic of your question, but I also believe that you know, this Japanese Muslim has the only reason uh, to, uh, to respect the like, Japanese culture. It means yeah. like that I think the ordinary Japanese Muslim, now they don't have like strong reason to preserve the traditional Japanese culture. For example, a good example is kimono. For example, now if you are just like uh, like uh, ja an ordinary Japanese who loves like fast fashion, like which clothes you want to use, or or if you believe like kind of capitalistic like ec economy, which clothes will you choose? Like H and M or this traditional kimono? Of course you go to H and M. Uh, or if you just like want the fancy like furniture with a reasonable price, like uh, which handicrafts do you want? Like this Islamic hand, traditional handicrafts or IKEA? Of course you will go to IKEA. But if you're Muslim, then. There is a reason to wear this kind of like a kimono. Because if you wear a kimono, then you can express the spirit of taqwa. Mm -hmm. you know, by, you know, hide the, uh, by hiding the aula. And then even the male is, uh, is, male is also the same. Like, which clothes can express the like, beauty of Islam? Is HIM like a tight t shirt or this traditional kimono? Mm -hmm. This traditional kimono, I believe. Yeah. Because right. even this inner wear is called jub, uh, uh, jubba. It's jubba. Yeah. Now I'm wearing jubba right now. So this is why, like, actually, the Muslim has like strong reason to they like, show respect to the traditional like Japanese culture. So okay. this is why I believe that you know the, the Japanese Muslim can save the traditional Japanese culture against the modernity. That's the reason I asked because they were stressing more on Islamic dressing and Islamic cool. culture uh -huh. rather than like, adapting the Japanese culture to Islam. Uh -huh. And I find that might be a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. For the Japanese-born uh, children yeah. to adapt to, yeah. but if they took the other route yeah. and uh, tried to adapt the Japanese yeah. culture into Islam, and you know, sort of brought them to learn more about Islam through uh, Japanese.
he's going to. Yes, yes. Be yeah. yeah, so you don't have to buy Garabia from yeah. Amazon. Like, you, know, you can just wear this jubba, like exactly. this Japanese jubba. Yeah. Especially there, Islamic There's a lot more stress on Islamic traditional clothing and uh -huh. uh, social habits uh -huh. rather than the Japanese. Oh, uh, yes. And but also in the same time, and if she will see like Egyptian and Japanese, maybe they can redesign like Garabea with like a Japanese style. Mm -hmm. So this might like bring like new creativity yeah. to the Japanese culture. Yeah. That's why I keep saying like you know this like now we have like big potential uh, to 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 help like Japanese culture to develop into the, to the next stage. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for the talk. I just wanted to ask So far, I never found like one like a common uh, like thing that we, because everybody has their own story. For example, like me, like I am more guided to Islam by reading like books about the Uh But the other uh, Muslim, uh, for example, like you know my students, you know Mahid, uh, he just became Muslim like eight, eight months ago, nine months ago, oh, nine, months. Uh, nine months ago. And when he came to Turkey, he was a Muslim. But I don't know why. But my friends, he they treated him as like a Muslim. Even though he was not Muslim, but doing by engaging with him, he started saying that he might be the Muslim, <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, like he he gradually like, he become like a culturally Muslim, and now he's a practicing Muslim. So this is what I'm talking about. Like you don't have to like ask the the person to accept Islam, like. The since because the, my Turkish friend he traded him as a Muslim, <laughs> and so naturally, maybe maybe this is my wrong because I never told them you know, he is non Muslim. But you know, but this like akhlaq, you know, the behavior uh, was like inspiring for you know my, to, uh, to live as a Muslim. So I even know, I, I even didn't know that he become more like, like a Muslim when he became blessed Muslim. Like, like, so this is what happens. Like so because everybody has their own like own story and and and. and you know, the Allah, you know, Allah, uh, it means like Allah, you know, controls everything. So that even maybe just one cup of like water with a given by a Muslim might be like inspiring enough. But when it comes to the Japanese, I think that if I can find the one common thing is that, you know, I think the Japanese, especially Japanese who live in Japan, they feel a strong like stress and pressure. And then, you know, in Japan, they, every year, like 20,000 uh, 20, people commit suicide every year. Uh, so, you know, this like, social pressure is really sort of suffocating. And many Muslims, they say, like, after they become Muslim, you know, they feel kind of like a relief. Because in Japan, uh, you know, the uh, you know, when you're watching the Japanese youth, you might not, uh, you may find the form of that, you know, that in, in contemporary Japanese society, we don't have the culture of the uh, forgiving someone, especially like the media. When they someone make a really minor mistake, they stop at they they keep attacking the person until they commit suicide. I mean, this is the way it is really divisive in Japanese society. But in Muslim society, like uh, as far as I know, I think still there are so many problems exist in the Muslim country. But I see this strong sense of embracing the weakness. Of the humanity, and these are strong cultures of you know afwa, afwa, you know the, the forgiving yourself and forgiving the, the others, and I think this is, and, and it has like a really strong uh, like a, uh, like a message uh, to like a Japanese, and I see yeah I, I as far as I know from my own student and my students, my students are always saying that you know that they once they move to Muslim countries or once they uh, enter like Muslim community. They, they, they really feel that you know, they, now they feel like secure. It means that like, they are not censored or they are not controlled. That's why. So maybe this is one common thing. That's how I think about it. Question? Yeah, exactly. I'm back off. It's a slight follow up question to what you were just mentioning about uh, passive power. Like you can tell someone about Islam 
mm -hmm. without actually speaking directly about Islam. Mm -hmm. My question is, what do you think for the Japanese people the best way is to give da'wah to Japanese oh. people? The best way to get da'wah is, I think, this is just my opinion, but I think the best way to da'wah is that instead of like preaching Islam, I think we should be stay with them. I think, yeah. They show the show this culture of like aqua, you know, show the you know, culture of embracing and also like forgiving. Right? I think this uh, this is the most influential way to show the spirituality of Islam. And for example, like my, myself, you know, when I become Muslim, I also feel loneliness in Kyoto because there is not big Muslim communities. The one thing that I really strongly remember is the biryani. Biryani in Ramadan, because they, every they, every every evening at the time single. So you know every time I go to the masjid, these Pakistani brothers they always pre they prepare like the tons of the biryani, and for the for uh, for the brothers. And I still remember the taste of it. And because I never saw such a beautiful culture in the other region. I mean not just in the other region, but still like this taste of biryani. <laughs> Is the uh, if I don't have the if I don't have the biryani. I'm sure I will quit like, being a Muslim. <laughs> just, just real no, I'm pretty sure. I'm just really serious. Yeah. Because that's why, you know, in Tasovo, you know, they, they, uh, they, they use the word, you know, zauk. Zauk means like taste. It means like this taste of Islam is very important, not just like it preaching Islam. Then we should offer that the life giving, uh, like, taste of the Islamic spirituality. That's very important. So, so my advice is that you can make shawarma or Biryani, <laughs> and if you get Japanese, it's my empire. No, I'm really serious. Thank you. Just, just, just yeah. a quick. Ah, no, please. No, right. Oh, I've already done one. That was a quick, that was a quick, quick one about. Okay. Uh, how was it learning uh, Turkish from Japanese? Because I know they have the same grammatical structure, but oh, Turkish is really easy. Yeah, because grammatical structure is also the same. So, for example, watashi wa gakkou ni ikimasu. Now, I go to school. Mm -hmm. it means. In Turkish, ben okuda gidiyorum. Watashi wa ben okuda gakkoe gidiyorum ikimasu. It's same. Because the order of sending is completely the same. So that's why in full Japanese, uh, the only thing we have to do is just memorize the words as much as possible. But when it comes to Arabic, the Arabic almost killed me. Like, it's so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it also in Jordan, but it's so difficult. And especially the Kusa, because when I'm in Egypt, the, one of the shocking things is like, that when I speak Kusa, People laugh at me. <laughs> I said, Anna Urid Hadar Kitab. And then she said, Ha ha, you have any Quran? Anna Urid Hadar Kitab. Ha ha ha. But I write the Egyptian off like, you know, because I, I, I yeah. in Arabic we call it the Hafif al It means like a really like cheering like a spirit. Eh? Like, I, 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 especially I really love Egyptian mother. Like, you know, because their like expression of love is really like uh, still. Yeah, I still remember that they're warm, like welcoming you know, when doing the Ramadan. It's one of the most beautiful memories. I just wanted to say thank you and have a comment on it. Uh, when, like, in, that's what we had to do, like, the Java concept of Piazza, uh -huh. which I never truly really understood the concept. Uh -huh. But until you put the picture of, uh, uh, you know, your anime, uh -huh. uh, your illustration with uh, Safra Zarfadan, uh -huh. and then, you know, growing up uh, as a child, or like growing up watching Japanese movies, you would always see, you know, that children or the samurai just walking. Around Japan and coming to adventure, mm -hmm. uh, that finally clicked to me. Like, why? Ah, yeah, I remember that picture I brought. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. For example, do you, do you read a Vagabond? It's a Japanese manga. Vagabond. Oh, it's a manga about the uh, famous the samurai warrior called uh, Musashi Miyamoto. Oh, yeah. And I interpret that, right? yeah, I interpret the whole story of Vagabond is Safar Darakawata. Oh. Or Nazar Barakadam, yeah, I mean, right? And they, 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 they're observing yourself. And also, like it's about like spiritual journey. So, yeah, like if there's an artist in here, I really encourage to write, to draw like like Muslim manga or Islamic manga, because this is really influential like, uh, the medium right now. Mm, do they have name your characters? Uh, specific names? I haven't thought a specific name yet, but <laughs> one of the students, said, you know, one Turkish student says that. You know, the one who said that, you know, now, especially like a conservative, like a Muslim, is also misrepresented in Turkish TV series. Mm -hmm. And she said that, uh, especially like secularist like TV, Turkish TV series, they always put the name Fatima 
which is a conservative, like a Muslim like a character. And her name is Fatima. And she said that she got bullied when she was children, then, uh, because the children were, you know, they mocked, they mocked her because she, she, she has like the name Fatima. And she said that, oh, since you have the name Fatima, so you're gonna, you're gonna stay in the house for, uh, until the end of her life. So that's why I have decided I, I would definitely put the, the name Fatima in one of my characters. Like, yeah. It's sort of like strong, like. My name is Fatima. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. This is how it should be. And as I said, you know, now you know, children are fighting in the schools, and children are you know, facing lots of challenges. So you know, we need to encourage the children uh, to, the, to say that being a Muslim is cool, and practicing Islam is cool, and memorizing this Islamic class is cool. You know, we have to show that you know, before talking about the correctness of Islam, you know, we have to encourage that you know, this being or you know, living as Muslim is cool. And we lack this kind of like, uh, like a culture, like entertainer like a culture. Mm -hmm. So this is why I, mean, I know uh, I'm designing the hijab in just series. <laughs> yeah. And this is why you know, I encourage you to buy this picture, mm -hmm. bring, bring it home. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Space Toon. Space Toon? Oh, yeah, because yeah, there is something so funny, I don't know if people know it. Like huh? they uh, translate Japanese cartoons into Arabic. And oh, like Conan? Conan is yeah, 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 Detective and, Conan. And when they translate it, for example, uh, Togomori used to drink all the time uh -huh. when he is uh, detecting with the thief or whatever, uh -huh. or he's a killer. And they translate it as apple juice. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah, I have noticed. Yeah. Yeah, I watched it when I was in Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's so funny. And she, uh, same she and the, the, the Ran, and they translate as engaged. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah so I didn't know that. So halal. Halalified uh, <laughs> Japanese, yeah, it's and we grew up watching it, taking yeah. the good part of the culture because yeah. they show you the the things that you mentioned, like the, having a malim, yeah. being someone with good character. Yeah. Um, so I, I I was just curious if you know about this one. Ah uh, yes, uh, do you know anime called Grandizer? Yes. A yeah, Grandizer. For example, my Arabic teacher in Jordan, he studied Fusha by watching Grandizer, <laughs> not just reading Quran and Hadith again. Like this Grandizer is like teacher of Hussa for yeah. them. Like. And also like Captain Martin, you know, Captain Tsubasa, or Conan, yeah. or like, a, or Bakugan, like a tourist and everything. Like, they, it's really, it's, they, this Japanese culture is not only like, uh, not only for the Japanese audiences. Like, you know, I, now I can clearly say that the Japanese language, Japanese manga, is becoming like a linga franca, even in Muslim communities. So that's why you know, we need to use this medium. So I mean, not only just halalifying, you know, they detect the Conan. You know, we can create our own like, fictional characters. But I think you know, Al Jazeera is doing the kind of the creative stuff in that. But I watched some like CG, I animation. It's about like the life of Salafi. I remember they were kind. Of, I don't know, maybe you're wrong. But I watched some kind of anime. It's created by Al Jazeera. So they are some like a creative like artists in the Middle East as well. Do you have a picture or something? Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Now, there are so many Islamic scholars that started to use Patreon. Patreon? Patreon. It's like a website that you can get funding. I can uh -huh. do small translations or extras. Uh -huh. And then they will like, give it to an explicit community, like uh -huh. throughout the year. Uh -huh. And then people will subscribe for like a short fee or like a, uh, like a graded fee. Like, so they give them like one picture a week. Uh -huh. You pay only like five, five pounds or something like this, or or if you give them a whole book, then the people who are really interested um, subscribe to that tier for more money. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, really, I'm, I'm really bad at making money, so right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I'll I'll check inshallah. But right now, I think uh, uh, inshallah, I want to publish like small pamphlet, mm -hmm. uh, which is a collection of you know my this fictional character. Uh, if I can find a publisher in the UK, it would be really great. Uh, so, yeah, and once I publish it, I am trying to write like a like, really small novel by using those fiction characters. So, this is also like a long step. Like, I'm not trying to create like a, like a lot of the links within like one month or one year. Like, you know, I, I decided to do this project as my like a lifelong thing. But, yeah, oh, yeah. Last one. <laughs> um, I also learned in Arabic, and uh, what do you, on a personal level, what do you enjoy um, in terms of writing? Arabic or Japanese? Arabic, of course I love both. Uh, but, you know, there are so many like types of calligraphy in Arabic characters, mm -hmm. and like a Kufi kind of characters or Nastari characters. And I found out that I can go back to, I don't know, 
the other side. Is there anyone? Uh, no, not this side. Uh, oh, yeah, that before, not before thing. Okay, no, this next one. Yes, uh, can you see that, you know, the calligraphy? It's, it actually, this is like a Nastani calligraphy. Mm -hmm. But uh, I have noticed this Japanese style manga character fit with this Nastani character. Like, I also tried the other uh, like calligraphy, but the, I think this calligraphy like suits like the best. And this is also, you know, this is also, I, I'm enjoying this process because why I'm, during I'm designing uh, like a Japanese Islamic art, like I, uh, I, I can notice that, you know, how, I, uh, like I'm doing this try and error, like, what, like which, uh, which type of calligraphy would suit like a Japanese like style art, or, or also, uh, actually my aim is to try to uh, create uh, like hat yeah but I need like a Japanese style like Arabic calligraphy. That's why can you see the, those two dots mm -hmm. in her head? Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, yeah, that I think that pattern is actually uh, like based on like a Japanese like uh, or East Asian pattern with the yin yang, yeah, yin yang character. So this how I I gradually try to design like Japanese calligraphy. So this is you no know, uh, what I want to say is that. In most of the cases, now I don't have the clear answer, but the, I'm enjoying this process itself, like process of imagining the Japanese and cultures. And this is what I'm encouraging the children. Like, you don't have to reach the answers. Like, for example, like, uh, uh, like, like uh, reach the answer as soon as possible. Like, we should enjoy this like journey, mm -hmm. and because this is what uh, this, this is what a human should like be. Because right now we are surrounded by like, this modern entertainment, like YouTube, or TikTok. For example, TikTok, uh, some Muslim missionary they try to give the answer in 15 seconds. And it's impossible. Like so when, when I design, uh, when I'm writing like a Japanese uh, style, or when, I, when I'm translating uh, like Islamic classic into Japanese, you know, I found like another like beauty in the Japanese language itself. And also when I'm when I'm drawing like Arabic calligraphy, you know, something I found that you know it's as if this Arabic calligraphy is made for expressing like a Japanese values. So this is a, this this is all you know only. Uh, thing that you, you know, I can you know uh, notice this beauty when I'm engaged in the process itself. Mm -hmm. So you know, this is one main purpose of purpose when I'm doing this art. Oh, is there is no question that I will show this tea ceremony. You can see the picture later. Sure, I didn't expect this big <laughs> teapot. <laughs> So I have, so from now on, I would like to show this is the Japanese tea ceremony demonstration. And, and as I said, you know, I found that this Japanese tea ceremony could be like the best medium to introduce the, Jap the Islamic spirituality because uh, there are so many like similarity between Japanese Islamic culture and Japanese culture. And one of them is that, for example, this, is my grandmother's certificate of the tea ceremony. So in order to perform this tea ceremony, you know, you have to, to take education uh, under like, uh, like a certain like sheikh, like murushi, like master. And my grandmother is also a tea master, and this is a certificate when she finished uh, like an introduction of the Japanese tea ceremony. And this is my certificate. Uh, for example, now, so there are total like eight levels in my the Japanese tea ceremony, and in order to become master, you have to finish at least a full level, and I just finished the first level, and it takes five years. So, another, so you, so in total forty years. 
So it means another for 35 years. I'm, three, I'm 33 years old. Inshallah, if I, when I'm 60, <laughs> 70 years old, I can become a master because this traditional education. Right? Because you know, when in, in episode four in Star Wars, like Obi-Wan Kenobi was already like an old guy. Like, and this is how the traditional education should be. Like there is no like young, like uh, they, they, there is no like Ray or like Doctor Strange in the Japanese tea ceremony. Like, you cannot become like a best tea practitioner like uh, without any guidance. So it takes because during this, you know, during this training you have to memorize lots of like Japanese calligraphies and also the history of Japanese tea ceremonies, and also you have to remember the form of the serving tea. So this is like a holistic like art, yeah, and this is also my certificate. Good. I mean, usually, like master, uh, actually, actually, my master ordered me not to show this certificate everywhere you go because this, is, <laughs> this looks like I'm showing off. Uh, but this is a good example, so you know, I uh, uh, I got the permission from the master. Oh, and this is the traditional Japanese fan, which is used in is Japanese tea ceremony, and this this is a sign of the founder of a tea ceremony. And, you know, 500 years ago, and this is the second grandmaster, and the third grandmaster, and the fourth and fifth thing goes on. So this Japanese fan uh, uh, is showing the genealogies of the, the Japanese tea ceremony, you know, sedasida of the Japanese tea ceremony. And this certificate, you know, if, you, if we use the word certificate, it, like, it may sound like you know, the modern Geisha thing, but you have the exactly proper word uh, for this to express tradition in Arabic, like ijaza. This is Ijada, you know, this certificate gives like a permission to perform this tea ceremony. Yeah, it's the same in the hut. Hmm? Oh, yes. So today, you know, the, uh, this tea ceremony is called, it's called Bonnyaku Dema. Eh? Bonnyaku Dema is the uh, like, simplest like, tea ceremony uh, like performances in, in my school, like Urasenke, like a tea ceremony. And the aim of this tea ceremony is to seek the balance between like macrocosmos and microcosmos. And this tea use and tail is like tea at the symbol of the macrocosmos. Uh, because uh, this, you know, in ancient like East Asian philosophy, uh, they believe like five major elements like are composed in this universe. In the fire, it's mean like, uh, it's like same in Naruto. Uh, like it's a fire, water, wind, tree, and the earth. But usually, you know, this teacup is made of ceramics, so it represents the earth. And this the teaspoon and the tea mixer is this made from bamboo, so it represents you know, the tree. And this is the metal, made of metal. And hot water is the uh, hot water is the fire and the water. Oh, actually, there's no wind. Oh, sorry, I just put <laughs> extra. <laughs> and <coughs> and before the serving. Uh, so before beginning this tea ceremony, uh, the tea artist or the tea master are uh, required not to wear any accessories uh, because the, the accessory shows like a social status. Uh, because in during this tea ceremony, that everyone should be like equal. And can you can anybody sit in front of me? I just want some, as like a volunteer. Any volunteer? Oh. Okay. <laughs> so before I start in tea ceremony, uh, the master and also the guests or the students will bow to each other. Can you say "Yoroshiku o negai shimasu"? You say slowly. Hey. Yabashi. Okay. Yoroshiku. Yoroshiku o negai shimasu. Yoroshiku o negai shimasu. It's really difficult to translate in Japanese, like actually, but. In this constant context, it means like thank you very much for giving me such great opportunities. And the important thing is that not only from the students to the masters, but the master also should show the gratitude to the students. But this is based on the yin yang philosophy. It means that there is no master without students, and also there is no student without the masters. Like 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 Jiraiya Sensei mm -hmm. in Naruto. There is no Jiraiya Sensei without Naruto, and there is no Naruto without Jiraiya Sensei. So this is how the uh, Japanese believe in uh, traditional education. And, and then uh, the master will start the ceremony.
store. And the first task uh, you will learn when you enter this tea ceremony is to how to fold this special like tea ceremony like handkerchief. Actually, do you want to try? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we use these tea handkerchiefs to polish uh, this tea container and teaspoon, but we'll show. This one side, which is not a suit, so can you put this part in this side? This? This side? Yes, this side. And, and can you fold like this? Mm -hmm. There you go. And this. Uh, like this? Yes, and this. Mm -hmm. Please put it on the left side, uh, left hand. Left hand. And open. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Oh, and then. Yep. Please wait. I will show until the last. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> So this is how we form the handkerchief. Okay. So I will just I'll do this very slowly. Three fingers. Three fingers. To the back. Mm -hmm. And move this left hand like this. You will lower. Mm -hmm. And the right hand will go up like this. Mm -hmm. in your yes. And fold this part with your thumb. Mm -hmm. And release your pointing finger. Right. OK. Yeah. Ah, it was chocolate. This is good. <laughs> very nice. And, like, and left arm go up. It's both is <laughs> No sisters. <laughs> and go up. Uh -huh. And please hold this part like this. Right. Yes. Watch it. really good. I'm not sure. And use your pointing finger. Right or left pointing finger? Right. Uh -huh. Like this. Or you can, you, you can just release right finger, right hand. Like this. Do it like this. Ah, really? You can just release. And this means, my master told me, told me this means oneness purifies everything. Oh. Like oneness purify everything. Like oneness purify everything. It means that oneness will purify this whole process. Mm -hmm. So this is, so you put like this prayer when you fold in this handkerchief. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, alhamdulillah. <laughs> and you can use this bursa natsume. Okay. Let's so yeah. practice. What so, uh, grab this tea container with your left hand. Take yep. finger with your left hand, and up, down. Sorry, like this. So first, up, uh -huh. down, uh -huh. and put this handkerchief or handkerchief uh, or tea container, uh -huh. and a little bit. Uh, Yes. Okay. Now you practice like Japanese Islamic like Zikr. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Why you wipe it? Hmm? Why, why you need to wipe it? Oh, uh, to, you know, to clean this tea container, like, to, to keep the tea so container like, clean. Like a Medlevi samurai or something. Ah, yes, mm -hmm. clean. And also, this is the metaphor that why you're polishing mm -hmm. this tea container. This is a metaphor of polishing yourself. Oh. That mm -hmm. by polishing this macrocosmos, this macrocosmos also purify yourself. And, uh, and also, you know, when we fold this handkerchief, I, the tea artists put the prayer like oneness purify everything. So actually, this oneness purify this macrocosmos and also the microcosmos. And maybe the like, Muslim can put like an Islamic like, message you know, into this practice as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. So now you entered my tariqa. Arigato. 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 Thank you. So big. <laughs> Is it still hot? Oh, okay. Oh, I'm interested.
so now I clean this team sir and also I will so we Yes. Then, then if this is like a special tea ceremony, uh, usually the tea artists will serve like sweets. So, and they will say like okashi o dozo. Okashi o dozo means now you can eat the sweets. And this sweets represent the sweetness of this life. And the matcha represent like a bitterness mm -hmm. <laughs> of this life. Uh, so it means that, so, the, so that's why this tea ceremony is like the art of the like embracement, like the art of embracing the reality of this life. So you also like face like sweetness and you also have to accept like bitterness. Right. So so this tea ceremony is actually like represent the uh, spiritual like a journey of the human uh, development. You can drink it instead of taking it. Before drinking, you say, Arigato gozaimasu. Can you say, Arigato gozaimasu? Uh, but you have to thank me. Uh, in tea ceremony, first you have to thank the divine, right. uh, which created this moment. Right. So, you can say, yeah, Alhamdulillah. Okay. And you can turn the cup two times, with this clockwork. Clockwise? Yeah, clockwise. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And you can drink the tea. Anyway. That's better than the hipster stuff you get. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what does the rotating symbolize? Because you did it as well when you were... Ah, yes. I must the masters that this is the message that you are sharing uh, this like blessing with the others. Yes. So how was it? It was very nice. Oh, okay. It was really nice. It should be bitter though, like right? because yeah. it represents the bitterness of your life. So. Then, um, <laughs> I remember learning in um, the Benabu in Prophet's Medicine that bitter is good for you. Or it's good for you. Ah yes, like I, I remember Ghazali also said the similar thing. Oh. Uh, am I allowed to give to anyone to try? Yeah, yeah, also you can share. And if you any extra cups, then we can I can make extra. Yeah. Oh, this tea, tea ceremony? Yeah. Oh, yes, right now, uh, this tea ceremony is somehow become like, uh, like practiced by the female students. But actually, this the tea ceremony was the like samurai culture. So before the modernization, uh, the only like men were like studying this tea ceremony. But after the modernization, uh, this the tea the tea artists they open this education to everyone. So that's why, they, especially the Japanese family, they started to use this tea ceremony for the education for the female. But usually it's open for both right now. Yeah, yeah. And you find in modern society, it's both people learning, or do you find actually less people are learning it? I think less people are learning it. I'm sure this, this culture will die in within 50 years. <laughs> so I may be like the last like a tea artist. Like, mm -hmm. So this is why I said like, I think Muslims should engage in expression art uh, to, to, to revive these traditions. <laughs> Oh, okay. This is. I have a question because 
when I, when I was younger, I used to do a lot of Japanese martial arts. Uh -huh. And they used to have these traditions where you almost like prostrate to somebody. Uh -huh. um, and you look and you kind of like look up. So as a Muslim, do we have like a, you know, because like, some Muslims will say you can't bow and everything. Uh -huh. so how do you kind of like navigate those aspects of culture? No, you just don't have to bow, to be honest. Because it's not obligatory. No.